So this is a short video to tide people over while I continue with the next part in my series on musical transitions. I'll be doing this from time to time, making singular observations about music and coaxing little lessons out of them. In this case, I'm going to be looking at the song Hallelujah, written by Leonard Cohen and later giving a memorable upgrade by Jeff Buckley. And what we're going to be looking at specifically are bad covers of Hallelujah and why I think they're bad. This song is covered all the time. I mean, especially after Jeff Buckley's stripped down interpretation, which did away with the backing chorus and additional instrumentation of the original. It's now become almost a rite of passage for anyone who aspires to sing while playing guitar. And since it's covered so much, people naturally try to add a bit of flair and personality to their own performance of it. And sometimes these interpretations just ignore, I don't know, basic structure, and you end up with something that sounds awkward or sometimes just dreadful. Now the majority of interpretations that I hear, let's say 60%, are fine. But since I walk through central London every day, I get to hear many, many interpretations over time. And there's this one tiny moment where, in my opinion, the other 40% are screwing up. And it's gotten to the point where I'll actually interrupt my journey and hang around just to hear how the busker in question does it. So let's get stuck in. Rather than face any more copyright claims right now, I'm just going to play the section in question myself. And I've made a really simple graph just to show exactly what this song is doing. Well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall and the major lift, the baffled king composing, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. So there you go. If you're familiar with the song, you probably thought, that sounded pretty standard. And that's okay. Um, yeah, you're right. W uh, well done. This whole musical moment worked as an arc. You're getting higher and higher in pitch and louder and louder until you reach the climax. Hallelujah. And after this exaltation, things descend, becoming softer and softer and slower, emotionally easing you into the next verse. Leonard Cohen describes it as, a desire to affirm my faith in life, not in some formal religious way, but with enthusiasm, with emotion. So with this in mind, the musical trajectory makes sense. It's a climax of exaltation, and the highs don't feel high if everything else is high, so he builds up to a big peak and then comes back down to prepare himself for another run. This is musical structure in microcosm. Jeff Buckley had a slightly different interpretation. He called it a hallelujah to the orgasm. Fine. And despite the fact that this slightly differs from Cohen's intention, it still makes perfect musical sense. Do we need to explain how the word orgasm fits this pattern? Zack Snyder gets it. He completely gets it. Um, although he got the versions mixed up. Uh, did, could you not afford Jeff Buckley? Actually, this is vile. It sounds like their dad is watching over them. So with all that in mind, let's listen to a cross-section of YouTubers making a stab at this part. And let's ask ourselves, does this make musical sense when considering everything I've just said? To ease us into it, I'm going to start with a really tiny quibble. Right, stop. Okay, this one gets a pass, although the singer dipped down a semitone below the final note and then came back up. Apart from sounding a little bit lame, in the context of the whole phrase, why would the second last note be the lowest? Let me remind you of how Jeff Buckley does it. As I said, a minor quibble, but the more you hear it, the more annoying it gets. Yuck, that one's worse. He spent too much time focusing on the number of warbles he could fit in a second. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ah, there we go again. And I'm not a fan of those accentuated pauses, but I'm only getting started. Check this out. Okay, that sounds confused. Uh, singers do this a lot, singing with an imagined main vocal line. 
It sounds like you're singing the backing part when your main singer stormed off. Let me just jump in. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's better. That was rubbish. Although an impressive warble per second ratio though. Incidentally, when you warble, this is what you're doing. Okay, try this one on for size. Okay, well, extra points for trying to be different, but man, what's that harmony meant to be doing? Great, now our arc looks like this. Did you subvert the whole idea of musical direction as some sort of nihilistic statement? It worked. Right, this one coming up is the most common and egregious offender. Ugh, don't go an octave higher. This is even worse. I know they're the same notes, but they're in a different register. For example, does this sound right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, no, 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 no. Just, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Um, right. Uh, and now, hold on. Not, not in front of the baby. Look at him. He, he doesn't like it. Uh, listen. Uh, right. Oh God. Um, uh, you're gonna like, you're gonna give him weird ideas. At times like this, it's probably good to take notes from a pro, and who better than Bono? I promise that trumpet has nothing to do with me. I am a donut. Right, so in conclusion, if you want to make a song your own, that's fine. You can add or subtract as much as you like, but here's the problem. Some pieces of music are really simple, and if you bend them too far without considering what makes them work, well, you're not really contributing very much. On another note, if you're simply subordinating the musical meaning to a display of your technical skill, then you suck. And this isn't to discount the importance of individuality and alternative perspectives in music. There's more than enough room elsewhere in this song for that, but if you really want to celebrate your individuality, then I'd suggest writing something of your own rather than hitching your trailer to one of the biggest stars out there. I mean, you know things have moved on when Ed Sheeran joins the party. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh man, and he got it right too. Well done, Ed Sheeran. If that doesn't inspire you, nothing will. Well, that's the video. Hope you enjoyed it. There will be another probably quite small video coming up pretty soon. The video I'm making about musical transitions, which is the second part, is taking a bit of time because I'm going to go fairly hardcore into theory with that one. Also, I've realized that asking people to subscribe at the end of videos really, really works. Um, I'm obviously trying to set up a new YouTube channel. It's early days, but whatever you can do to perhaps share it with someone else who you know is into music, um, or just do whatever you can to get more subscribers or help me out, that would be fantastic. Uh, I've set up a Twitter account. I'm not really certain what's the point. I have three followers, which is, you know, excellent. One of them is my wife. And what am I meant to do? Just post YouTube videos on Twitter? Well, I'll do that. Okay. Uh, also, I have a, oh God, I feel dirty, a Facebook um, Tantacruel account. Yeah, give that a whirl. Um, basically, what you can do is log on to Facebook and you can see the exact same stuff you've just seen here. Um, and then you can press like, uh, and that way then you have engaged with the internet. Um, that's all I think I have to say. Take care. Thank you very much. <laughs>